we often think of politics as being on a spectrum, the right and the left. And interestingly, this spectrum is often a measure of social, political, and economic hierarchy, which originally referred to the seating arrangement in the French Parliament after the Revolution. But in today's video, we'll be looking at Quebec and why its politics don't often range in this right or left spectrum. So make sure you're subscribed and let's get right into it. As many of you are aware, Quebec is the second most populous province in Canada, and it also has the highest number of native French speakers in the country. They have a long political history, which I'd like to divide into two parts before the Quiet Revolution and after the Quiet Revolution. You see, prior to the Quiet Revolution, Quebec had a much more right-left political landscape. In fact, during the period known as the Grand Noisseur, Quebec was run by Maurice Bessy, a right-leaning politician who absolutely hated communism and gave pretty much free roam to the Catholic Church in the province even going so far as to prosecute Jehovah's Witnesses, and we're not talking about the 1800s here, this is the mid-1950s. However, something changed in the political environment of Quebec after its Plessis' death. We saw the rise of Jean Lesage and the Liberal Administration, which is normally classified as a center-right party in Quebec. But the policies that Jean Lesage would introduce, this would change everything. So let me go over what happened. So Jean Lesage is elected, and he separates the church from the state. Whereas previously, teachers and nurses were mostly clergy, and now they're all government workers. There were also many economic reforms, such as the nationalization of Quebec's electricity company, Hydro-Quebec, which many citizens saw as a source of pride for the province. All these social and economic innovations brought with them nationalism. You see, during the 1967 World's Fair in Montreal, General Charles de Gaulle of France declared Vive le Québec libre in a speech at Montreal City Hall, giving the Quebec independent cause additional public credibility. The Sovereignist Party Parti Québécois was founded in 1968 with René Lévesque as its head. René Lévesque is widely regarded as the godfather of Quebec sovereignty. He frequently discussed his vision of an economic alliance with Canada. So as you can see, the 1960s and 1970s were a very tumultuous period for Quebec. With a lot of societal changes, nationalism was emboldened, which naturally divided people into two camps, pro and anti-sovereignty. Now remember these two parties because this separation in the population will be clearly marked from 1970 until around 1995. But before we continue with our story, I just want to mention that I've just opened up the channel membership. So if you want cool perks such as custom emojis, shoutouts at the end of my videos, and even early access to videos, check out the first link down below. And now don't worry, I won't start mentioning this in every single video. It's new and I just wanted to mention it once. And um, if you want to support this channel and the growth, well, please just check it out down below. But let's continue with our story. It's 1970, the end of the Quiet Revolution, and Quebec is now pretty much a modern province country. Previously, the English in the province ran the majority of the businesses and the economy, and while this was still the case, the Quebecois were finally being a part of their province's economy, but for many, this still was not enough. You see, enraged by previous wrongdoings, Quebecers voted in 1976 for the Sovereignist Party Parti Québécois, led by René Lévesque. The first PQ administration was dubbed as the Republic of Professors because of the large number of candidates who taught at the university level. The PQ government enacted legislation restricting political party finance, as well as the French language charter, also known as Bill 101. The charter recognized France as Quebec's single official language. The government stated that the charter was required to safeguard the French language on a mainly Anglophone continent like North America. This charter, while viewed as populist by many, was still very popular among the PQ's electoral base and only reinforced nationalism. And in 1980, we witnessed something that would forever shape or reshape, I should say, the Quebec political landscape. The first referendum on Quebec's autonomy. This brought the two previously discussed camps head to head, with the no camp winning with 59.56% of the votes. However, this referendum only emboldened nationalism, because whether you were right wing or left wing, you had to be in the yes or no camp, and this is what you based your vote on. I could go on about how the second referendum in 1995 was even tighter, with the no camp winning 50.58% of the vote. But having votes this close, as you might expect, simply makes people unhappy and causes more division. The yes and no camp remained and were quite normalized in Quebec, and while the Quebec sovereignty debate has died down over the last decade or two, many Quebecers still regard the split as pro or anti-sovereignty, not voting for conservatism or liberalism. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Let me know what else you'd like to see next, and I'll see you on the next one.